Hi, I'm John Crane with GMFice.com. I'm going to take a look at the 2015 AFC North in the NFL. Now, the Ravens, they won the Super Bowl three years ago. Kind of rebuilding the last two years, 8-8, eight and eight, but impressive 10-6 and six last year while retooling. The Bengals are loaded with defensive talent. It was the Steelers who actually won the division a year ago, which we had predicted. However, for 2015, we're going to take the stance that Las Vegas has, and that is they're predicting the Baltimore Ravens to win this division. Over-under for the Ravens will be nine wins. Kind of agree with that. Ravens are off overall an 11-7 season, 10-7-1 straight up when you count the playoffs. They won at Pittsburgh as a playoff underdog, 30-17. Then they lost a thriller at the Patriots, 35-31 as a plus seven dogs. They're only one step away from the AFC title game. And one thing Baltimore can rely on is home field dominance, 6-2 six at, at home in each of the last two years. In fact, go back the last four years, they're 26 and 6 straight up at home, but 14 and 18 straight up on the road. In fact, the last two years on the road, the Ravens 5 and 10 straight up, 5, 9, and 1 against the spread in the regular season. So they're a team to back against the spread at home, but fade on the road. Now, the offense for Baltimore, very good and balanced. 13th in the NFL in passing, 8th in rushing behind 30 year old quarterback Joe Flacco. He had 27 touchdowns and 12 interceptions, almost 4,000 yards. They got the offensive line fixed, and Flacco was only sacked 19 times last year, plus 29-year-old running back Justin Forsett was terrific, over 1,200 yards rushing, 5.4 yards per carry, a huge upgrade on this balanced offense. Now, Flacco's targets have somewhat of a new look. They hope tight end Dennis Pitna comes back from an injury, and they drafted rookie wide receiver Breshard Perriman. He's six foot two, the 26th overall pick out of Central Florida. He's fast, he's big. They also had rookie tight end Max Williams in the second round. Now they still have 15-year wide receiver Steve Smith. He's 36 years old. Okay, he had over a thousand yards receiving last year, but he really faded in the second half. He had four 100 plus yards games in the first half of the season, none over the final eight games. Unless you want to count the playoff game where he did have 101 yards against the Steelers, but in a game where the passing attack was great against New England, he wasn't with just 44 yards. Now, the defense for Baltimore was a mixed bag last year. Secondary was terrible because of injuries, 23rd against the pass, but they were outstanding up front, fourth against the run. The secondary got depleted. The good news for 2015, it's cornerback Jimmy Smith is back. He only played in eight games last year, and he's 27 year old, 27 year olds and in his prime. Plus, they pick up Kyle Arrington, a quarterback from the Patriots. They still have hard-hitting safety Matt Elam, a former first-round pick, but he has disappointed of late. Then you got the defensive line. All right, they lose Haloti Nada because of salary cap concerns, but they did that uh, on purpose because they feel his replacement, Timmy Jernigan, is just as good and younger. In fact, when Nada sat out last December, Ravens went 3-1 and one with Jernigan in there, and they allowed just 94.2 yards rushing per game. Then you got a linebacker core for Baltimore that's absolutely loaded. Chris Canty, C.J. Mosley, Elvis Dumoville comes off a 17-sack season. Terrell, Rugg, Terrell Suggs is terrific with 12 sacks. Now the schedule for the Ravens, very difficult early on. They're going to play four of their first six games on the road where they do have trouble. In fact, the first two games at Denver and at Oakland. That last one is a 3,000 mile road trip. In the second half of the year, they get the bye in week nine, which is nice. They play six of their final nine games at home. In their road games for the year, not too bad. They're gonna play at the Cardinals, that's tough. But then the rebuilding 49ers, at the Browns and the Dolphins. So it's probably a team that may struggle early on, but they're set up to have a really good second half of the season. And if you like to play totals, Baltimore at home, boy, that defense plays so well. 11 and five run under the total at home. All right, in the second place, let's take a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're off a season with eight and a half, well, I'm sorry, they're off a season with 11 wins, but Vegas has them projected at eight and a half wins, possibly taking a step back. However, this Pittsburgh team uh, impressed last year at times, but they're also kind of a flaky team because they had that playoff loss to, Pitt, to Baltimore. But despite that, they won 11 games overall. So what, what was the story with this team? Well, during the regular season, they beat up on some impressive playoff teams. During the regular season, they crushed the Ravens 43 to 23. They crushed the Colts, scoring 51 points. And division rival Bengals 43 to 21 as a three-point road dog. On the other hand, Pittsburgh lost to the Bucks, the Browns, the Jets, 
They barely beat the Titans by three points. So really, who are these guys? Well, the offense for the Steelers was very good and should be terrific this season. They were second in the NFL in passing over 301 yards per game. And the ground game was fine, too, 16th in rushing. Overall, they were seventh in points scored, 27.3 points per game. They've got 33-year-old quarterback Ben Roethlisberger back, 32 touchdowns and nine interceptions. He was only sacked 33 times. That was a significant drop from two years ago when he was sacked 42 times. What the coaching staff has done with this offensive line is to try and get Big Ben to throw the ball quicker, to dump it off to the running backs. They want to avoid him getting hit and avoid him getting sacks, and it is paying some dividends. He's got incredible wide receivers. Antonio Brown, this guy has been terrific the last two years with over 1,400 yards receiving, including last year, 1,698 yards receiving. They still have 32-year-old tight end Heath Miller. He had 761 yards. Plus, they get a boost with rookie wide receiver Sammy Coates out of Auburn. Then you get the ground game with running back Livian Bell. I mean, he's going to miss some games in September because of a suspension. But what a weapon this guy is. He had 1,360 yards last year, 4.7 yards per carry. Plus, he had 854 yards receiving. That was second on the team. So this offense is loaded and should be one of the best in the NFL again. The defense, rebuilding defense for Pittsburgh. They were very strong against the run. Sixth, good front line with a lot of young talent. But it's the secondary that really got torched. 27th in the NFL against the pass. Now up front, they got linebacker Lawrence Timmons, second year Ryan Shazier, and rookie Bud Dupree form a dynamite young linebacking core. They didn't really have a lot of sacks overall, just 33 with Cameron Haywood, a young guy at seven and a half sacks, but it's a very good front. But it's the secondary that was bad and has a major makeover because Palomalu and Ike Taylor are gone. So you got 26-year-old cornerback, Cortez Allen and Mike Mitchell, they're back, and they both are off injury plague seasons. While management, they went crazy in the draft, adding 5'9", Senkez Golson in the second round, Doran Grant and Gerald Holloman to upgrade the secondary. They certainly upgraded the depth, but it's a lot of question marks with all this youth. Now the schedule for the Steelers, they're going to open up at the Patriots. They catch a break with Tom Brady's suspension, but they got some tough road games here at the Rams, the Chargers, Kansas City, at Seattle. They do get the Broncos and Colts at home, but they play four of their final six games on the road. Good news is the bye week comes in week 11. Steelers have been covering games, too. They're on a 7-4 ATS run. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals are off a 10-win season. Vegas is only looking at eight and a half projected wins in this very difficult division. As usual, a winning season with all the talent, but another playoff flame out. That's time they lost 26 to 10 at the Colts. So the general manager of the Bengals doing a terrific job assembling talent. But the coaching staff just can't get them to the next level against top teams. Like last season, if you remember, they started a perfect 3-0. Then they were favored at New England. They lost 43 to 17. Uh, at least they had a winning road record of 5-4. and four. Contrast that to two years ago when they were 8-0 at home, but had a losing road record. Anyway, the Bengals, deep defensive talent and an improving offense that still prefers ball control. The offense last year, 21st in passing. They were 6th in rushing the football. Quarterback Andy Dalton, he slumped. He had 19 touchdowns with 17 interceptions, only 21 sacks. And that plummeted from 33 touchdowns two years ago. When you look at the talent around him, uh, this offense should be a lot better. First of all, they like this running back, Jeremy Hill, who was a rookie out of LSU last year, over 1,100 yards rushing and 5.1 yards per carry as a rookie. Still have talented A.J. Green. This guy has had over 1,000 yards receiving in each of the last three years, despite missing some time last year with an injury. 26-year-old wide receiver, Mohamed Sanu, had 790 yards. So this is some really great targets to throw to. Now, tight end Jermaine Grisham, well, he had 460 yards, but he's overrated, largely invisible against good teams, as is his coaching staff. Now, they did bolster the offensive line with a rookie tackle, Cedric Ogbui, out of Texas A&M. He's a 21st overall pick. Downside is that the last four playoff appearances for the Bengals, can't ignore it, they scored 13, 10, 10, and 10 points. Oh, yeah, all of those were losses. Now, the Bengals' defense... Well, they're armed to the teeth. They had three straight years where they were ranked 7th, 6th, and 3rd in the NFL in total defense. However, last year they dropped significantly to 22nd 
overall, but that was mainly because of injuries. This is still a loaded unit all around defensively when healthy. Defensive end Carlos Dunlap is back. He had eight sacks and played very well, but he got a little help as the team had only 20 sacks overall. Now defensive end Michael Johnson returns after a one-year hiatus in Tampa Bay where he had just four sacks in 14 games. Meanwhile, linebacker Emmanuel Lamore, he's very strong in pass coverage, anchoring a very solid all-around unit. And the secondary for the Bengals, should be very good. You got Adam Jones, Reggie Nelson, cornerback Leon Hall. Bengals actually have only one spot to fill on the entire defense, and that's the left cornerback position. Bengals are on a 10 and 7 run under the total with a conservative offense and terrific defense. And the schedule, they're going to play four of their final seven games on the road, and they do have some tough road games at the Ravens, Bills, Cardinals, and the 49ers and Broncos. Finally, going to have to take a look at the Cleveland Browns as being in last place. Again, Vegas has them projected only at six wins. They did win seven games a year ago. However, they got that early because they lost their last five games of the season for a last place finish under first year coach Mike Pettin. He's the former Bills defensive coordinator. Begins the second season. They did have two first round picks. They took nose tackle Danny Shelton to bolster the defensive line and they did get Cameron Irving to at center from Florida State to help the offensive line. But they do need some help because this offense was 20th in the NFL in passing, 17th in rushing. And who's going to be the quarterback? Brian Hoyer left town, so they add 36-year-old quarterback Josh McCown. Not sure why, as he had 11 touchdowns and 14 interceptions with Tampa Bay, which means you got a lazy, whack job Johnny Manziel left. You know, any coaching staff that has to put their faith in Manziel at this level is in big trouble, especially with an offense last year that was 27th in the NFL in scoring just 18.7 points per game. You think I'm being too hard on Manziel? Go watch that game against the Bengals last year, December 14th. They were a two-point home favorite. They lost 30 to nothing. They had 107 total yards. They were one of 10 on third down. Manziel had two interceptions and three sacks. Throw in the fact that Wide receiver Josh Gordon, he's going to be suspended again, this time for the entire 2015 season. Boy, it's tough to see how this Cleveland offense is going to improve at all. No wonder offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan bolted to sign with the Atlanta Falcons. Keep in mind the Browns are on an 11-5 run under the total. They really have little running back help with Terrence West. And Isaiah Crowell, these guys average 3.9 and 4.1 yards per carry, although they hope running back Duke Johnson is going to help out a rookie. The offensive line actually isn't that bad. But the wide receiver core really looks bleak. They do bring in Dwayne Bow, but he was a relative bust in Kansas City. Now the defense, two years ago this Browns defense made huge strides, but everything fell off the map last year. They have been ranked eighth in the NFL in passing and pass defense in each of the last two seasons. However, the run defense completely imploded last year, 141 and a half yards rushing per game. That was dead last in the NFL. So they got much younger up front, starting with the Washington nose guard, 350 pound Danny Shelton in the first round. Browns spent seven of their first 12 draft picks on the defensive side of the ball, including linebacker Nate Orchard. He's gonna build around a very good defensive end and Paul Kruger, he had 11 sacks last year and a third year linebacker Barkovicius Mingo out of LSU. Now, there's no concerns with the secondary. Cornerback Joe Hayden and Justin Gilbert are terrific. Hayden has led the NFL with 84 passes intercepted or defended since the year 2010. Now, the schedule for the Browns in 2015, they got some winnable games early on. They got to open up against the Jets, Raiders, and Titans. However, October is brutal. You got three of, of those four October games on the road. They're going to have to be facing on the road San Diego, the Ravens, and they're heading out to the Rams. And the lone home game is the Denver Broncos. So we're we looking at an 0-4 October for Cleveland. Do get the bye in week 11, but that's going to be followed by a nice three-game homestand. And keep in mind, if you like to bet totals the last four years, the Browns with their offensive troubles, 42-20-1 under the total. I wouldn't be surprised. That's the way to play Cleveland this year team to look at under the total, particularly in first half, so you won't get burned by overtime. All right, make sure you check out jimfeist.com. There are college football previews, video and articles, as well as NFL, and new members who sign up will get a $50 free credit. That and more at jimfeist.com.